You are listening to Proof Text, a Glossa House podcast exploring scripture with Dr. T. Michael W. Halcom and Dr. Frederick J. Long. Welcome and enjoy. Friends, hello and welcome to Proof Texts. I'm Michael Halcom here with J.M. Smith. And this is 10 Questions, where we ask 10 questions about a scripture verse in order to model uh, a really good posture that we should come to scripture with, one of inquisitiveness and curiosity and questioning. And um, so J.M. never knows, or at least in this episode, doesn't know what verse I'm going to spring on him. <laughs> so nope. um, I'm blind. Yeah, so... I'm going to throw the verse onto the screen here, and it's another Old Testament passage. Um, Joshua 1, 9. Many of you have heard this. It reads in the NIV like this. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. All right, uh, J.M., why don't you take the lead out of the gate on this and throw our first question out. All right. Um, Yeah. I'm going to ask first right off the bat, um, strong and courageous. Uh, What are those two looks like yeah chazak strong chazak for emats yeah i would i would want to know what those two adjectives how they're used and elsewhere in scripture not necessarily what they mean in english but um because they're 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 they seem synonymous so is there Mm. a shade of meaning between chazak and uh, emats that's my first question my first question is about punctuation. Does the question mark belong after the U or mm. um, does it belong after courageous or does it belong at the end of the sentence? Like, is this where the question mark really belongs? Um, or does there need to be a question mark at all? Yeah, so where does the question mark belong? Hmm. Yeah, uh, piggyback on that. My second question: There is, I don't see a, um, I don't see a command. So be strong and courageous, uh, unless I'm missing it. Uh, let's see. No, no, no. Okay. Um, no, I. So okay, this is actually those are not adjectives. Looking looking at chazak and emat, so those are verbs, but in right. English they're rendered as adjectives. So be, <laughs> yeah, how, yeah, it, it's commanding an adjective. Hmm. I would want yeah, I would want to know how you do that. How do you be something? Because in English, we have the verb to be, and then we have the adjective. But in Hebrew, uh, chazak is a command. Just chazak, like strong, like <laughs> just strong no, exclamation yeah. point. Okay, same thing with, uh, so yeah, how how's the, I guess the question's like, how do we render chazak v'amatz? Hmm. All right. Um, so then we have this. I want to know: is there um, is there like wordplay happening here? Because when I look at this text, uh, I see a bunch of lambdas. <laughs> so we have this um, hallo. Aloha, right? And then down here, though, we have the all, the all, mm. all, right? And then, um, so I'm wondering if there's like, some, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there some wordplay going on here? And is it intentional or is there no wordplay? 
Mm. That's a good one. I would, I would want to know. Um, so, just like you have uh, be strong and so chazak v'emetz, you have those commands, and then you have two negative commands: al tarots al techath. Um, so, I would want to know: is there a difference? between being, how's an IV rendering it? Dis- afraid and discouraged? Uh, mm. Yeah, and that's not the normal word for fear. So I would want to, I would want to look at the background of um, Ta'arots. Mm. Yeah, because Yara is the normal word for fear and that's not the normal word. Interesting. Um, so if there's this command to strengthen and uh, do courage or be courageous and not be afraid and not be discouraged, all these commands, um, like to not be afraid, what what has happened that makes the issuing of these commands necessary like does the command to be strong imply that there was a time when the person or people weren't strong same with courageous had they been afraid is that why this command like what has happened that um brings about the use of these specific imperatives I, the question I would have in just thinking about the context, I would think that this is Joshua talking to, or getting directions to tell to the people, but the commands from what I'm looking at are singular. Um, have not, have I commanded you? That is a singular Mm. you. So I would I I know that in Hebrew sometimes it can speak collectively right. and there's corporate solidarity and uh context versus grammar is a little more fluid in Hebrew I think than it might be in Greek although I don't know for sure but I just know in Hebrew it's fairly fluid. Um so I would want to know yeah is Israel being addressed collective singularly or is this talking to a specific person within the camp? Hmm. Yeah, I'm interested. Uh, is is uh, this phrase at the end? Uh, I guess with you wherever you go. Um, is that really the best rendering to capture? the sense of uh, talik. Mm. Um, because you have this this idea of halak and walking. Mm-hmm. To me it feels like something that 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 image of walking is so prevalent in the old testament. Um is something lost here by just rendering it go, but but really is with you wherever you go. Um, is that better than like in every place which you walk or in all the ways which you walk? Mm. So I'm really intrigued by that. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question because that's all that's how Israel has been getting around for 40 years is walking. Yes. <laughs> how literal is it being i guess it sounds yes. like what you're asking hmm. all right you got one more left i got one, one more, more left. left um i would so i would want to know is um how the the owl the knot um how that's 
is that functioning the way uh, in Hebrew, you can say things with low or al, and sometimes low is like a more emphatic and al is a more situational. That's how, you know, it's usually presented mm. to the beginning students. And so, but that's not always the case. And so I would want to know, is this, is this like a al, is it, is it using al because this is a situational uh -huh. directive or does the owl have more of a force so closer to like what low in the Ten Commandments not do not thou shalt not? So is he saying, hey, don't be this, or is he saying you shall not be this? Um, yes. How how strong is that owl in this context? Hmm. Very good. Yeah, I really like that question. Um, So we have, uh, if this is presumably God speaking, and have I not commanded you, da, 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 da. Like I see the next verse within my purview. So Joshua ordered the officers of the people. And it's like him commanding people as well. Like is there a connection there between God commanding and Joshua commanding um, or ordering in the next verse. So how does the action of God and nine maybe connect with parallel or not the action of Joshua in verse 10? Mm, Cause they're both doing the commanding. Is that what yeah. you're, you're picking up on? The yes, exactly. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. And then even in 11, you get more commands. Um, and mm -hmm. Josh were talking, so, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. super interesting, man. Um, I got to admit, I, I, I did spend a year and a half preaching through Genesis, uh, before I started preaching through Mark this year. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but I love getting into the old Testament passages because I, these days, like as I'm preaching through Mark. I don't spend as much time there, although Mark does reference the Old Testament in every story he tells, every episode, there's mm. some hearkening back to the Old Testament, um, usually multiple links back to the Old Testament. But uh, well, that reminds me, uh, I wanted to ask you, um, the, the phrase itself, Old Testament, do you use that? Do you, do you tend to say Hebrew Scriptures, Hebrew Bible, Old Testament? How, where are you yeah, at on it, that? It's, I choose the audience. I base it on, you know, uh, to the Jew, I become a Jew, to the Gentile, a Gentile. I, I, if I'm in a Jewish context or an interfaith context, I will usually say Hebrew scriptures or Hebrew Bible. Um, if I'm around a bunch of Christians and an explicitly Christian Protestant, especially, I'll say Old Testament. Gotcha. Uh, I, I'm not like Daniel Block who says the first Testament. I think that's, a, I, I see why he says it and it makes sense, but it's a little too stilted. Um, so usually just I'll say Hebrew Bible or Hebrew scriptures. If I'm around all Christians, I'll say old Testament. Mm, mm. Yeah. Second Testament for new Testament just does to me does not do it justice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't think so. This... The whole point is the Old Testament itself says, I will make a new covenant. Yeah, exactly. So I think calling it the new covenant or the new testament is there's there's Old yeah. Testament precedents. There's Hebrew Bible precedents for that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you guys for watching. Head over to the Disciple Dojo website and YouTube. Lots of great stuff there. JM's always pumping out new stuff. Um, and hey, like follow, subscribe to this as well. Uh, we have tons of good content coming out of here. And if you feel like sharing, share. Uh, and open up your scriptures today. Pick a verse or a passage. Start asking questions. Uh, until next time, aloha. Interested in growing your ancient language skills but not sure where to start? Glow's House can help. From illustrated readers and short stories to lexicons and grammars, Glossa House offers a variety of resources for beginning, intermediate, and experienced ancient language learners. Head to glossahouse.com today. Glossa House.
language resources for the global community.